Hey guys, it's Lisa back with another video for you for Lisa Wise Designs and today we're going to continue in our series on the magical wallet and the little storage box and finish up some of our matting and making some more inserts. If you're loving this project and you want to pick up the supplies or the physical kit, all you have to do is go over to my Etsy shop. The link is in the description box below. And these kits are still available. There's a handful available in both the magical themed and the more generic scenic route theme. I had to think of the name of it. <laughs> so when I'm finished matting in this theme, I'm going to turn right around and start matting in the other theme. So no worries, whichever kit that you pick up, just wait a little bit longer and I'm going to be matting that one as well. So where we left off is we finished our album. It's totally complete. And we matted our box, so cute, inside here, that in there. And we matted our glassing bag is where we left off, I believe, yesterday. And let me see, here is the one I did earlier. So we're going to be making this tag with this cut apart in it and a small photo. And then on the back side, we're going to be matting it and we're going to be putting in this clear library pocket and a library card in here for some journaling. And then also in the glassing bag, we have this um, little photo booklet put in here. So I'm actually gonna be putting photos in mine as we go along together. So let's get started and finish up this glassing bag. All right, so we are in the middle of page 24 on your cutting guide. We're gonna need a tag. So let me get all the things out. I tried to work ahead and see what I would need for this video. You're gonna need a four by eight tag. And this is in your kit. And then you're going to need a four by six cut apart. I got a small photo that I trimmed down here. The one I'm using, I just kind of trimmed down to our bodies, but it is a two by two and three quarters photo. I have about seven or eight inches of the yellow, um, I want to say thread. I know that's not the right word. It's a ribbon. And then I have that library pocket and the clear card, uh, the library card and the clear pocket. Wow. Boy, I should maybe just go back to bed. I got a scrap of this blue check paper, and then I also have the front page that came uh, in the paper pack. So I'm gonna put this out of the way. So let's get started with the tag. Let's do this first. I'm gonna put this away for a second. And I was gonna ink, but I think I'll just wait for that. So let's get that four by six cut apart, and we're gonna trim it down. You want it to be the width of your tag. So if your tag is a little bit smaller or if it's ex exactly right, um, just take a look at that. See how this is just a tiny bit uh, larger. So I'm gonna take about an eighth of an inch off. Okay, and then that should basically be the size here. And let's see, we want to trim it down a little bit, the cut apart, we want to trim it down to four and a half tall. So see all this open white space? We're gonna take a lot of that out. So if I trim it down four and a half, so about a quarter of an inch taller than that A, so I'm just gonna kind of eyeball that. And go down to about four and a half. There we go. Oh, look at this cute uh, little strips we've got left over. So here's this. Then we're going to cut some strips of this off, the blue check pattern paper. Um, since the tag is not quite four inches, it's like three and seven eighths. That's why I'm going to be doing some little bit, you know, funky numbers here. Um, the blue check pattern is going to be three quarters of an inch and then another one at two inches, but we want it to be three and seven eighths. I think this may be four inches. Actually, this is not enough, so I'm going to cut it this way. So we need not quite four inches, not three and seven eighths, and I'm going to double check it over here on my tag. All right. Let me see. Do I need to trim a little bit more off? Just a tiny bit. 
or you could go ahead and glue it to your tag and cut off the sides. That works too. All right, I think that's going to do it though. Double check it. Now from here, I need three quarters of an inch. And then it said I also needed two inches. There's those two pieces. And then for the back of the tag, so this one, let's see, it is seven and one quarter by three and seven eighths. So I'm gonna put it in my trimmer this way and go over to three and seven eighths, a little bit less than four because my tag, like I said, a little less than four. So I'm gonna cut that off. So at least we used up some of this front pattern paper. I love that. And then it needed to be, I've already forgotten, seven and a quarter to fill up that whole tag. Seven and a quarter. All right, I'm gonna keep that little piece just in case. So let's see what we've got here. I'm gonna go ahead and ink the edges. So let me know if you have ever used that front title page on your pattern paper before, or if this will be the first time that you've ever used that in a project. I think that's fun to be able to use it. And a lot of times your paper is a matte finish where that's more of a shiny finish. So that's why I don't always use it. But in this case, it's going on a tag, which is not like, I guess, part of the actual album. There's not things like right up against each other. So I don't, I don't think it's gonna make that big of a difference, but you can see that it's shiny. So if that bothers you, that might be a reason um, not to use it inside your album, but for something like this, maybe perfect. All right, I hope that that stays on that shiny paper without coming off on my hands. We'll see. All right, so on one side, what we're gonna do is we're gonna dry fit this first. I'm gonna put this blue check paper all the way down to the bottom of the tag, flush, then butt this up against it, and then put this here and just make sure it still looks okay, the measurements are okay. All right, and then we can just glue it down. I wish this was a live video when I'm gluing so I can just look up and answer some questions. I will be doing some live classes with May May Made It in about a week, week and a half from now. That's gonna be so much fun. We have sure missed the live classes. And this is not even like a online live class. This is actual classroom. I can't, I can't even remember the last time we did it. Two years ago, maybe? It's gonna be a lot of fun. This one. And we'll go ahead and glue the other side down and then come back and do some embellishing. Right All right, so I'm gonna turn it around. If any of it's sticking out on these corners or if the paper's a little too long, just turn that over and trim it up using your tag as a guide. And I have some sticking out at the bottom here. Just try not to cut your tag I like to angle my scissors away, that usually helps. And then to help camouflage any of that, just hit it with some more ink. And then I'll go ahead and ink the top of it. Good to go, that's so cute. All right, let's go ahead and do this side. And then we'll embellish a little bit. I remember the first time I ever saw someone use the title page on a project. It was Miss Brenda that works, you know, as another designer at May May Made It. She, I was just blown away by the creativity. I thought, well, that is one way to stretch the paper and what a cute idea. I just really never thought about it until I saw her use it. Okay, good. She uses every piece if she can and she is not afraid to try new things. She is not a rule follower. <laughs> all right, so on this side with all this pattern paper, what I want to do is I want to put this clear pocket over it. Now, the easiest way to do that is you're gonna see, this is the front, here's where the pocket opens and it's at the top. So, I'm gonna start at the bottom and I'm going to peel 
I'm not gonna peel it off, I'm gonna peel it away from the bottom, if I can get a hold of it here. If I can get down to the bottom, there we go. Okay, I'm just gonna peel away a portion like that, or just fold it back. So that is the bottom of the pocket, here's the top, just double checking. So, I'm gonna start about a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch from the bottom. You see how it just so happens when I cut my pattern paper, I have this little blue area. So I'm gonna start right at the top of that. So it's, like I said, about an eighth to a quarter of an inch from the top. And then I'm just going to simply line that up at the top, center it right to left, and get this started by just putting the smaller piece down before I take the liner off like this. And I start from the bottom and move my way up, like getting those air bubbles out. So now that I've got that, I'm in a pretty good position. I can take the rest of that liner off and start pushing up, trying not to have any wrinkles. I'm not doing the big areas at first because I'm trying to have it, you know, pretty flush. So you can see right here, once we take this off, this should all be on there pretty smooth, so just be careful. Don't let it stick until you're ready for it, and then just kind of pull on it, all right? And then push up. Really burnish it in. So it's not crystal clear, it's a little cloudy, but you can still see that pretty pattern paper. And then when you put this or a photo inside, look at that, isn't that cute? So cute. So let's do some embellishing. So I'm gonna grab this little box full of stuff here and so let's see the one that's finished this here which can kind of follow uh, along with this as a guideline here so I like to use my washi and cover things up especially dark washi like this see where it says like borrower's name and due date I'm just going to put that right over where it says borrower's name just kind of like that I think that's fun if you want to put a little glue on it first, if you're afraid it'll come up, go ahead and do that. And I'm just going to trim the edges, like so. I'm going to really burnish it on. Get this off my scissors. Then I'm going to look in here for this little piece of ephemera that says happiness starts here, or you could go and look for a sticker. I can't get the piece of washi off my finger. I think it was in here. I think it's a piece of ephemera. Is it a sticker? No, oh, it is a sticker here. Right. We'll pop that off and ink the edges if you'd like. I think that helps it stand out from the white background since it's a white sticker. And see, I'm gonna put that over where it says author, so you're never even gonna know that was there. And then now you've got some room here to journal on the front and the back. And I just wanted to cover this up, you don't have to. So I went back into those stickers and I found a long skinny sticker that says smiles right here from ear to ear. And that fits perfect in that little area. like that and I'm gonna put it up to the end here on this side love that so cute and then a little cute little journaling spot All right. so I'm gonna put that in this little pocket and then you of course can do more um, accessorizing there so to speak Okay, so here we go. Let's put the big sticker there first. I really love this bow, this really big bow here. Make sure I get some ink around its edges, especially around with the white pieces. And then I'm just gonna center it on the blue and kind of put this red center of the bow right underneath where that ribbon's gonna go, like so. And then my photo is going to go here, just a little photo there, and then we can accessorize that and do a little more um, embellishing. So I like to do, oh, that's so cute. 
such a cute photo. All right, so what you can do, like I say, a lot of people don't know what to do with washi when it comes in kits. I like to just do different things like this to add little pops of color, accents, and you can do this with pattern paper if you don't have washi. So I'm just gonna tear a couple strips of washi, see how it's got some here, and just start, put some there. If you wanna put glue underneath it, if it doesn't feel really sticky, I'm gonna add a little glue to this piece. Just gonna let it hang off. I'm gonna trim that off in a minute. And I'm gonna put, I'm gonna cover up my hand if I put it right there. But I really like the looks of that. It's actually behind the photo. So I think what I'll do is have it hang off the bottom and then I'll trim it up. Get some of that extra glue off, like so. Now this one I decided to add a little more, do a little more, uh, Washi by putting a separate piece, different pattern on top. So I think this is fun too when you get a kit and you only get, you know, a little bit of what you need because you're never going to use, in my opinion, you're never going to use all of that um, washi that comes on those big rolls. So this is kind of fun to get a kit and get a little bit of everything. Okay, like so. Let that dry. And you don't feel bad about having leftovers because you're not gonna have that many. All right, and off the bottom here. The only thing I don't like about this is having to clean my scissors. I need to do that for my next video series. They're getting very sticky. And then I'm going to look here at the stickers, see this little castle here. And I'm going to do the same thing I did in the last video. I'm going to uh, make a little cut so that I've got a straight edge on the right side of the castle. And then I'm going to butt it up to the end here of the tag. Oops. Okay. I didn't get a good trim off the tag. That's my problem. There we go. Now I'm gonna layer that on top. Make sure it's straight with the cut. There we go. Now I can burnish that on. Isn't this adorable? See, I used a word different than cute. <laughs> All right, then I'm gonna look for some of these little bitty um, words to layer right here. But I might put mine there because I don't wanna cover up my hand for some reason. I'm being weird about that. Let's see, I used magic. I wonder if I can find that one again. There's one here. I, th I think that was probably an ephemera piece, but I'm, oh, there it is. Sometimes they're hard to see. There we go. Cute. I love that, I hope you do too. And now we can put our ribbon in. All right, so now let's put our ribbon in. I'm gonna use the about seven or eight inches of this yellow half inch ribbon. And I'm just gonna do the same technique I've been doing, folding it in half, pushing it through whichever one you want to consider the front. Then pulling those two tails in the loop and then trimming this up. All right, so I'm gonna fold this in half. Trim. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing here. All right. So cute. It makes a big difference to me to see the photos in place. And then one here, love. All right, so here's this one. Here's the one with my photo. Back in here, there's the sample, put that back in here, put that with my sample. All right, so let's do the next step, uh, another insert for our glassing bag. So we are going to be at the top of page 25. We're gonna make, make a simple photo mat booklet. And then I'm gonna show you another one I did off screen. It's not part of your tutorial, but I will share it with you in case you want to make another one with any leftover paper that you might have. Maybe 
this out of the way. Okay, so at the top of page 25, it says to cut six and a quarter by eight and a half. So we know this is eight and a half because this is eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So I don't have to cut that. So I'm gonna turn this over and cut it at six and a quarter. Okay, and put this in my scraps. So now I have six and a quarter by eight and a half. So on the eight and a half side, I'm gonna score this at four and a quarter. Now I could get out my scoreboard, or since I only have one score to make, I can do it on my trimmer since I have a scoring blade right here. So I'm gonna move my cutting blade and use my scoring blade. Look at me going down to the bottom again. I'm gonna go over to four and a quarter. And I'm just gonna score like that. Fold it in half. And bone folder here. So it's just making a simple booklet, like so. And what you can do with this is take a four by six cut apart, ink it up, and put that on the front as a nice simple way to start your booklet. Believe me, no one is too old for fairy tales. That is a cute saying. And then once you open it, then you can put three photos, two on the inside, one on the back, and it's very simple, very effective, very cute. This is Megan, so cute at Epcot. All those construction walls they have up, they at least painted some cute things. You could uh, take some interactive photos. Love that of her and her butterfly. And then here's me at Animal Kingdom. I love taking pictures of Animal Kingdom on the side, not in the very front. You get a really pretty photo and there's not any people there. It's very difficult to take photos at the Magic Kingdom without people in your photo, but not so bad at Animal Kingdom. And so on the back, I'm gonna put a picture of us together. This was our first day. So we had traveled all day on the plane, or all morning on the plane, and then all day in the park. So we closed the park out after a Mexican dinner. It was so fun. And we had sweated all our makeup off, but we were so happy. This is our annual trip. This was our fourth year of going in January to some of the theme parks in Orlando. Love it. Love that tradition. We're accountants, we have to get away. <laughs> so here is a, another version that you can do if you want to um, use some of your leftover paper if you have any. This one has a little border that peeks out on the side, which I think is fun. So this one, it's six and a quarter like the other one, but I just made this one a little longer. I made it by nine inches and I scored it again at four and a quarter, just to give me a half an inch border here, just to put something fun. So I'll probably come along and put some ephemera here when we're all said and done. But I thought this was cute. This one's all about Grace and her pictures there at the different parks. And then this one's got me and Megan at our trip. And then I had already done one of me and my daughter um, when we were doing, that, when we made that file folder. So, like I said, this, this um, one is not in the tutorial, but I thought that was fun. So, our glassing bag is made, so we can put that in our box here. So, all we got left to do is the shaker and then this folder here. So, we're going to work on the folder. Put this away. All right. So this is where we're going with this one. We're gonna make this a folder out of a piece of 12 by 12 uh, pattern paper. And then we're gonna make a bunch of inserts. I already have my photos cut for that, so I'm gonna kind of leave that alone. So we are now in the middle of page 25. So I don't know if this part of the tutorial, I don't think it is, is on the, um, on the tutorial only because I wouldn't think that you would want to make a folder since you're not getting a box. But I'm gonna give you the measurements in case you do 
want to make it and it's not in your tutorial. So take a piece of 12 by 12 pattern paper. Let's go ahead and cut off the branding strip. Started with that. So you want it to be 10 inches wide. So just make sure if you're using a pattern paper that you don't want to, you know, get, uh, if it's got words or a pattern on it like this, that you're making it 10 inches wide. Put this away. And then you want it to be 10 and a half tall. to get my scoreboard out. It is underneath a bunch of stuff. <laughs> All right, here we go. So just make sure, yeah, 10 and 10, make sure I did it right. Let me grab my uh, phone folder, stylus, whatever. Okay, so I'm in the middle of page 25. So it says score on the 10 inch side at half of an inch five inches, which should be right in the middle, and nine and a half. So you've got a half inch on each side and one in the middle at five, okay? Score on the 10 and a half inch side. So I'm gonna turn it this way because I want my the top of your pattern paper to be on this side. And we're gonna go over to seven and a half. So the short piece here is the bottom. So just make sure you're turning your pattern paper in the correct orientation. The top of your pattern paper is over here by the zero, and you're gonna go over to seven and a half, and score. All right, that's all there is to it. So now let's flip this over. We're at the bottom of page 25, and work on this piece. So, you can tell, I don't know if you can see here. See here is the score line here at the bottom, right here, my finger is. There is, uh, it's not a very dark score line. Let me do that one more time so that you can really see it on camera. Let me try it one more time if it doesn't work. That's okay. The other one's is really shining on camera. Maybe I just didn't do that one as deep. I don't guess I did. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So there are rectangles at the bottom here that are three inches by half an inch. So it's from here to here, here to here. We're gonna cut those off. And I'm cutting off the score lines. I'm cutting it big enough where I'm basically cutting off the score lines. There we go, easy peasy so far. Now, I'm gonna go back and get some tape just to make this easier. You could glue it. And on those sides, those half inch sides that we have left, we're going to tape this down. Like I said, you could use glue, but I just find this easier in the construction process because we're gonna do some trimming. that real good. All right, so now we're going to turn over to page 26 and grab your ruler. And what I'm doing is I'm using the opposite side on the, the Tim Holtz ruler that I always use. It has a zero. I'm putting the zero right on that score line. And I'm going to come over an eighth of an inch and I'm going to make a, a pencil mark. Come over an eighth of an inch on both sides of the score line. One here and here, and there's good pictures of this on page 26. So from those pencil marks up to right here, here's my score line in case you can't see it, right there. From this pencil mark to that pencil mark right in the center, I'm just gonna draw a line. We're gonna make a real tall, skinny uh, triangle. I almost said rectangle, I swear, my mind. Do it on both sides. And just take your time. Okay, 
so now you've got these real skinny triangles okay so you're just going to cut that triangle out so you're going to cut on those two lines up to the score line and they intersect so then this is what you should have let me put a piece of paper underneath it here there you go so this is what you should have at the bottom so I'm going to fold on this three inch from the bottom score line I'm going to fold it up Burnish to get this piece started here. Burnish. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my pencil. Now we're at the top of page 27. So with one of these folded up, I'm going to use my pencil and I'm gonna make a mark where the top of this, this is gonna be a pocket, so with the top of this pocket stops. I'm just going to make a mark right there in pencil. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm just going to kind of make a mark over here in pencil where that stops. Now, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut on this piece with the tape. Um, this was half inch piece. I'm just going to trim. Just a second. Like that. So that now this half inch piece on the side is in two parts. That's all I did. This little piece where the score line is, now it's just in two different pieces. Same thing on this side. I'm just cutting from the outside edge to that first score line, which is a half of an inch. So now when you fold on the score line, it's in two pieces. Easy peasy so far. Everybody still with me? <laughs> All right, so I'm just folding it all flat again. So once you do that, what you want to do is you're going to remove the tape backing on the top pieces here and just go glue those or adhere those into place. So the top piece here, you just fold over and adhere that down. Same thing on this side. Like so. I'm gonna go ahead and erase any pencil lines that are showing. So now we're in the middle of page 27, so this is what it looks like. So we're gonna fold up our pocket like this, and then we're going to glue this down on top of it, and that's what's gonna hold it into place but yet you still have plenty of room to put things here because this is not gonna stop it since we did it that way. Okay, I did not trim. So if you, okay, once you, once you fold this up and you try to fold this over, if you get some resistance here, just trim a little bit more off. Like I told you, I tried to trim off the score line, but if you're still getting a little resistance, just trim another little sliver off and fold it over like so. You're not gonna see it because you got this whole half of an inch that is hiding it and keeping that into place. And now, let me get one of these. You've got this really big pocket, see that goes all the way to the edge since we cut it that way. Okay. Do this the same way, fold this up. Fold this over. If you get some resistance, just trim this a little bit more. I don't think I must have trimmed off the whole score line like I was saying I was doing because it's still, it still doesn't like me. There we go. That's much better. And that's your little folder. Isn't it cute? Now we can fold on this center score line. I'm gonna just hit it with some ink because I cannot help myself. I love it. I tell you, if you don't like the ink and you're really not gonna like the next uh, video series that I'm doing with the, the scenic route because the paper I'm using is not black, it's that parchment paper. And so everything that I use, I was hitting it with um, 
this different distress ink. Even on the cards, you know, where you wouldn't normally on the cardstock, not just the pattern paper, but the cardstock itself. So I try to have a lot of that pre done so you're not having to sit through it. <laughs> okay, love that. So we're skipping on down here to 28. So I just wanted to put an extra little design element right here. So there's an ephemera piece that says best day ever. Just this one. And what I did is I took this black paper that we just trimmed off some here and I just laid it on here and um, I guesstimated how much I needed, but I could probably give you a measurement to make it a little easier. So. You need about uh, two and a quarter by two and three eighths. Two and a quarter, two and three eighths. Let's put it on here correctly. You need to have a little bit of black around the outside. And then, if you want to, you can go ahead and corner round, since this is corner rounded. I'm going to use the quarter of an inch size. I want just a little bit of a rounded edge. And you're going to be pulling things in and out of this pocket, so I thought it was necessary to go ahead and back this little ephemera piece because they're, they're a little bit thin. And if you start hitting it with pattern paper coming in and out of the pockets from the back, you, you know, it's probably gonna get a little wear and tear on it. So from here, what I want to do is I wanna put glue about halfway down on the back. So I'm just gonna estimate somewhere from a third to about halfway here. And put that here on the center. Just make sure there's no glue showing here. All right. So cute. So cute. I hope you like this little folder. I thought this was really fun. I've seen people online make folders for, I don't know, other reasons. So I thought it would be fun to kind of adapt it and come up with my own measurements to make one for some photo inserts or for the tags that we were going to use. So let's do a little more embellishing on the front. So we are now right here in the center of 28. So let me look for, I did not pull these out. Um, these right here, these cut apart. So I use the So Lucky because I just thought it was adorable. So I'm just gonna go ahead and trim this side off and get this one. So you can use it uh, this size or you can trim it down some. In my original version, it had so much white space, I decided just to eyeball it and trim some of that white off. Yeah, I like that better. So that's just a judgment call when you're making things like this. I'd rather see more of the pattern paper if it's just going to be, you know, a big white border around here. So we're gonna put that this as so. And then we can add some more washi tape, some stickers, anything like that to just jazz up the project. So don't go all the way down to the bottom because we're probably gonna put a little piece of washi here. So I'm gonna go back to this red with the stars on it. Pull off some. Kind of tear it down the middle and I'm just gonna run some glue around the bottom here. Put that down like so. And I'm gonna do use the other side on the top corner here and turn it over. Put that like that. Cute. Then we can look in our stickers 
and especially these things like this, these smaller stickers. This one says, we're such big fans. I like this one a lot. I can't remember what I used on the other one. I don't have it pulled out here. Um, anyway. Oh yeah, this is the one I used. Just gonna layer that on top here. Isn't that adorable? You could put more stuff here if we find something small that goes there. Um, okay, let's leave that for now. So our folder's ready for our inserts. So let's start work on those. Let's see how many we have here. If I should stop here and do another video. We've got to make the inserts and then we have to make the shaker. So let's keep going and see if we can get our inserts made. They should be pretty easy. A lot of it's already pre-done because they're tags. So we're at the bottom of page 28. Okay. So here's that one. Like I said, I already cut my pictures down, so I'm just gonna try to keep those together and just go along here with you. Okay. So you should have a cut apart that says mouse and me. So here's mine. So I'm all outside of the <laughs> camera, aren't I? So all I did was use the four by six cut apart, nothing more. I'm not putting it on anything. I'm just gonna use this as a photo mat. So one side is just simple, the mouse and me. On the other side, we will put a photo. So I'm gonna turn this over. I forget, it's two-sided. Need to ink both sides. Okay. Here, and I, I trimmed my photo down. It was a four by six, and since the uh, cut apart is a four by six, I just took a half an inch off each side of the photo so it would have a little border around it. Like this. I think this is a fun way to mat a photo, and not having to use any other paper, just what's actually in your paper pack. Cute, simple as that. So on this one, I use a little ephemera piece and so, like I said, I just glued it down here, and then you could put your photo under there and then finish gluing. But I don't think I want that here because I love the graphics that came with this photo, so I'm going to keep mine plain for now. Let's put that here. See how simple that one was? Love it. <laughs> the next one is going to be another large tag. Um, this is the 4 by 8 tag, but of course it's 3 and 7 eighths, but you know what I mean. So, we're going to cut it down to 7 inches tall. So, I'm going to take an inch off the bottom of the tag. Okay. All right, let me move things around. This is what it's going, no it's not, this is what it's going to look like here. Okay, so I need some plaid paper. All right. So with this plaid, Paper. Let's see, we need three and seven eighths by six and a quarter. Okay, six and a quarter. So, not quite four. Okay, that's going to go like that. If you couldn't tell, I love to make tags. I just think it's really, really fun. I don't know why. I think sometimes tags to me are more fun than regular photo mats. All right, so then I'm just going to glue this flush to the bottom. If I cut it right, it's going to cut exactly right on the tag. Got a little bit showing, that's okay. Looks cute. I'm gonna turn it over. If I have anything showing, I'm just gonna trim it off. I think I'm good. So I'm gonna use a three by five photo. So I trim this one down. And then a piece of ephemera. This is the one I used on there. But see how cute. Isn't that, isn't that really adorable? 
use it like this or you could put it right here oh yeah you could actually put it up to the bottom because there's so much room like that or you could since I like to I usually layer them I'm not gonna layer this one since I don't have to layer it I got enough room even though I, my first instinct is to layer I do that all the time so I'm not going to I'm just gonna try to do something a little different Let's flip this over. So on this side, I trim this photo down. It'll be here, yep. So now I'm going to use that red and white polka dot if I have enough left of it. Oh yeah, plenty. I'm gonna make some quarter inch strips. I'm somewhere on page 28 or 29. <laughs> You're following along. Is this going to be big enough? Let's see. Because I need them to be three and seven eighths or so, almost four. Awesome. Just needed one little strippy. Oh, and it matches my little bandana thing or whatever that is in my hair. That was so much fun. We showed up on vacation and uh, my friend lives in a different state, so I don't see her very often. So she flew down from the Carolinas and I flew from Alabama. And on the day we went to this park, I had bought this uh, on an earlier trip to wear my hair and she bought one very similar, it has Disney on it. Hers looks more like um, Lucy Arnaz, you know, the Ricky, look, <laughs> Lucy and Ricky type thing, but neither one of us knew we had bought the other. It's so funny how that happens sometimes. So I'm going to work from the bottom up because you can always have extra space at the top. You may not want to see extra space at the bottom. So I'm going to work here from the bottom. Make sure I'm kind of flush here. And then I'll put the photo. All right. So I thought that was kind of neat. So we wore it on the same day to Twinsy out. Both of us are accountants by trade. So once we get through end of year, budget season, all that good stuff by January, you know, we've gone through the holidays and our work has been so stressful. So that's why we have been taking a, an annual trip the last four years to, uh, to just go ride theme parks and scream. Such a nice little way to treat ourselves after a few months of crazy. All right, that is really cute. And so you've got, I've got see on this one a little extra rim at the top, but it looks just fine. So we can put that here, but see there's this big empty space there. So I would put something here. Once I actually see my photo, I wouldn't want to put it there. So I'm gonna kind of look. I don't think I'm gonna put meet and greet cause that's not what is. Magic, here we come. This looks fun. This looks fun because we did fly there and this is on our way to the park. So it's a little big. I think I'm gonna to try to cut it down a smidge, even though it does have that weird edge to it. I think I'll like it better this way. Let's see. close as I can get at the top there. That's very cute. I'm just going to trim it as close as I can. Yep, so don't be afraid. You paid a lot of money for these kits. Don't be afraid to use them as you want to or what fits you. See, now it's got this kind of wonky look to it, but I don't care. It's so cute. There we go. I like that better. And then I might put a little washi or something on it. And that helps hide this little hallway we're standing in in the hotel as right before we go because, you know, everyone had, you had to wear a mask everywhere. So it's like one of the only places you didn't have to wear a mask. Because right before we 
not came in contact with any people. I'm gonna take some of this black and white washi. Paint some right here on the edge. Right there. up here and like I say washi is it's already sticky but it's not quite sticky enough to me not for a memory album that I want to last forever and this one we're not even putting any ribbon on we're just gonna put it in like that so stinking cute we'll probably put some more stuff on here later but for now we're going to move on to the next thing we got two more little inserts that's gonna go into our folder so remember making this here? Quite a few videos back, we made this piece because we made two at one time. So I'm gonna go ahead and round the corners because I like that look. And I love how I use so many cut aparts. This is a little bit difficult to round the corners, I will admit, once that tab's on there. I'm just gonna do the best I can. really looks sad. <laughs> Let me try one more time. Please, come on. There we go. Good enough. So here's one of my few cut aparts that I've got left. Happiness starts here. So moral of the story is, if you're watching the videos before you put it together, you might want to round the quarters before you put those tabs on because it is making life a little difficult for me. Maybe time for me to get a new one of these. Or if you know of a way to sharpen these blades, let me know. I have used it so much. I've definitely got my uh, wear and my money back out of it. It doesn't owe me anything, my daddy would say. Put this on the side and once again if you have a whole lot more photos to put in here then just skip this step of putting uh, this cut apart on here and put another photo down by all means okay. so then on this side I used it for a vertical photo and this is a hilarious photo of me because it looks like I'm just like doing the the Egyptian dance or something, but in actuality, I was waving at Mickey Mouse, and that's just how the camera caught me. And I'm also showing off my bright red manicure that matches all my Minnie Mouse tops that I love to wear. Even though Stitch is my favorite character, Minnie Mouse is a close second, and I love to buy shirts, and I love that red color, and you can see I have a hat on here with Minnie Mouse. Love that. Isn't that cute? And see, then you can add a femur piece. So see, I would add one up here. Let's see if there's no femur piece here. Some type of Minnie Mouse things. Oh, this wonderful day. I don't think I use this anywhere else. So I think I'll put it up here because that is just perfect. And that takes up some of that empty space at the top. Love that. We're just moving right along. So last but not least, we are gonna make this a double-decker type tag. She so should have one more black tag. It is three and an eighth, six and a quarter. All right, so I'm going to put down a three by five photo here. I already got cut. A little bit of washi and a little strip at the bottom. So let's see if I can find some of that this piece left. So I'm going to cut off a quarter of an inch piece and then about three inches. Sorry, I know I'm out of frame. Here. Okay. The only thing about putting washi on a black tag is, you know, the washi is kind of a semi-translucent color, so it kind of doesn't uh, pop as well as if you were putting it on white or manila, but that's okay. I'm still all good about it. So this one, I'm going to start 
near the top. I'm not gonna put this little piece um, flush to the bottom, so I wasn't worried about starting at the bottom. This one here. We are doing great on time. We're almost in an hour. All right, and I'm going to put this little sticker on here that says Big Smiles here. So cute. Winnie the Pooh is her favorite, so this was in front of the ride. So yes, she definitely had a big smile. So let's go ahead and I don't think I'm going to use this color washi. Like I said, it doesn't show up on this black, so I might as well just use the black and white. And I'm almost out. I used a lot of that on this, this album. Oops. Didn't tear that one quite right. Not that there is a right and wrong way to tear it, but it tore off a teeny tiny bit. Alright, so I'm just going to go over the edge here. Trim it off. Love that. Go ahead and do this other side here. So I have a photo that's, I think it's a two by two and a half. It's two and three quarters by two. So it's almost right here. So I'm gonna go back, find this piece here. It's not quite big enough. Nope. Here's a piece. Lost my ruler. Here it goes. So it's two and three quarters by three. Two and three quarters by three. And I knew I wanted to use this really uh, pretty piece of ephemera, but I wanted uh, there to be a layered look to it. So it looks like it filled out this whole big portion. So this is what I did for that. If you know you want to leave something, but you need to fill out the whole piece, then this is what you can do here. Yeah. So I'm just kind of starting. We'll start at the bottom. I'm going to leave about an eighth of an inch on three sides. It's more like a quarter of an inch, isn't it? A little bit bigger. There we go. And I'm going to put the Tower of Terror here. So I was taking a picture of me in front of the Tower of Terror. But it's such an extreme close-up, it kind of looks funny. So this was worked perfect to uh, trim that down. So this is my favorite ride. And I'm gonna know that's why I did it. Right, so here's this piece of ephemera. This is Happiest Place. And I'm gonna do the same technique. I'm just gonna do eyeball, cut it halfway straight. You could do it on your trimmer if you want. I'm trying to embrace doing things not quite so persnickety. It's <laughs> the best word I know for it. But you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And there's some things I can do and not have to have it exact. And there's some things I'm just still not real good with. Cute. That, oh, that did not glue down yet. I guess it's because this is a slick surface. I have to give it some more time. So while that's drying, I'll grab some of this red washi. Do the same technique again. Where I put a little here and some here. So with this one, I used the teeny tiniest sticker that says Good Times. I mean, it, I don't even know if you can see it on the screen right here. It says Good Times in like an aqua blue. It is the tiny sticker. There's a bunch of them that says cheese, but then there's this one right here underneath the balloons that says Good Times. So anyway, I'm not even going to hit it with the, the black because it's going to be too difficult. But then I'm going to put it, I'll add a little glue because it's so little. I'm going to put it right over this washi, and that's going to help it stand out a little more. If you can see that, I don't know if it'll focus right, but that's really cute. 
So I'm gonna move this to the side for now. We're gonna work on these, this little tag here that hangs down. So in your kit, you have this one little taglet. And let's see what else. Then you have this ball, ball chain, B-A-L, ball chain. So if you're making this on your own without the kit, this is one and three eighths by two and three quarters, thereabout. So all I did is I just layered on some pattern paper and on this side, I use a piece of ephemera, see how it's hanging off. I don't know if I like that or not once I got done with it, but I just used lots of leftovers and covered this up and just made a design element, just double decorating this tag here. So I'm gonna take this ball chain and get it out. I think we cut it down, let's see, to six inches, is this right? Where are my notes? So now we play the waiting game. I want to say, yes, six inches. I finally found it at the bottom of 28. So what you do is it's got this little piece right here that you can pull down and it'll come apart. So with one side on there, with a little connector on there, you just want to cut it about six inches. One, two, three, four, five, six. So about right here. That's where I want to cut it. And you're going to need some really sharp, very thin scissors. This is not going to do it. Uh, the ones I like to use are my Tim Holtz, these little mini snips. They're very strong, and I actually keep these just for things like this. If I want to cut chipboard, if I want to cut a piece of thin metal, something like that, that's what I use these for. So if you have something like that, they're very thin and they're very strong. So you're just going to cut that. And a half. I was like, it's not going to cut it. Okay. Now, you can keep this if you want to, but there's not another connector. But I'm not going to keep uh, mine for this project. I'm going to put it up for another project if I can think of something without having the connector on it. So just kind of put this to the side for now until we finish up um, this little tag here. So I might make it just like this. I might not. I don't know that I... Um, I want to put the same little ephemera piece on it. This is my favorite pieces. So I'm going to use some of that. I did really love this little piece. I was trying to find things that were small enough to fit on top of it. Oh, I didn't use this last time. Or on this particular one. There are a couple of small ones. I really liked this one there. Let's try it. And so, let's see what else. So, just dig around into your scraps, what you've got left over, just find little pieces that might be bigger than the tag. You can trim it down to what you need or you can glue it straight to like two sides of it and then trim it if you want. So this I'm definitely gonna have to trim. Need to come like so, okay. See, look at me trying out new things, not having to cut exact. So I'm going to glue this in the corner. So flush to the bottom and one side. If I can get it to shift over a little bit. Okay, so there's that side. I'll let it dry and then I'm gonna trim it off. So on this one, I had used that blue and white dot, but this is my favorite piece. I think I'm gonna use it this time. I'm gonna make this one a little taller. It's gonna make me a mark. There's probably measurements in the cutting guide, but you know, some point I'm just like, okay. <laughs> I'm not even inking the edges. Look at me. I'm just a wild woman. Now I'm just going to trim up those sides. You can add more layers. Well, 
She tried, but she couldn't do it. She had to ink. <laughs> At least around these edges. And a little bit sticking out here, so I'm gonna trim this up a little more. Oop, do you hear that? That means I must have got the tag part of it. That's okay. So on this side, I put this little piece of ephemera right in the center. Looks like a fun little ride here that you would see at an amusement park. The swings, anybody ever ridden the swings? I used to, as a teenager, ride them. Now, I don't think I would. I don't think I would ride them at any park. It would probably scare me to death. Just being an adult, you know? I think things just change when you're an adult, don't they? You just all of a sudden have fears that you never felt for. I guess you don't feel like you're invincible at a certain age anymore. Maybe that comes with your eyes going and all that stuff. <laughs> your eyesight, like when the doctor tells you have over 40 eyes. Nobody wants to hear that. Nobody. Cute. So there's one side. This I was going to see how far this would hang over. Uh, you know, let's see if I can find something else. Just this size. There's a coffee cup. That might be fun. There's another. There's a castle. We've used the castle, but still. Let's just try it and see how much would a... You know, not a lot it's going to poke out over so we could trim off, so let's just try it. It's just paper and stickers, right? What's the worst that can happen is to start over. No, the worst thing can happen is, well, I would say it out loud, right? <laughs> okay. Okay, that's cute. I like that. I'm loving it. So however you decide to make your small tag, you could even put a small two by two picture on here probably. Or maybe a one by one, that'd be really small, wouldn't it? All I did was layer this one on top of the other. So I put this one in first. Just put that small chain in here. And then, if this is gonna be the front, I'm gonna run it through this way and make this the front. I think, I think that'll hang correctly now. Let me look at it. Well, okay. Let me just do it the easy way, Lisa. Okay. So once you get it in like that, then you put those two little pieces together by running this little ball piece in the center of the open spot and then pulling up where that will click into place. This is like a cheap version of dog tag chain, right? So then it will fall just like that, just like so. So while you got this kind of pulled out of the way, you've got one more piece of ribbon left, about you know, seven, eight inches, and we're gonna put, push this in over the top of that. Okay. So just go slow, ever so gently. Just work this in there. It will fit, just might take you a second. Here you go, to pull it through. So I hope you've enjoyed this project and I hope I have brought you some unique things that you haven't seen before which is my goal always and if you are enjoying this project please give this video a thumbs up if you decide to make it with this paper pack or with one of your own if you'll go on over to our Facebook group that's also linked in the description below and give us some inspiration by showing us some photos let us know how you liked this project. We love to get some inspiration there. All right, so put this one out of the way. So now let's put it all together. So this was my example. This one's got photos. That one is not. Photos, not. Photos, not. Right. So this one goes out of the way. So this is what we made today with the photos on it. And then we made this little folder here. So let's plug these in our folder. So you have two for each side. So the way I would put it in here is I would put two of the taller ones in the back. 
like so, and like so. And then I put this in here. Maybe pull this up a little bit. And I put this one in here and have this hang off like that. Isn't that so cute, little folder? This in itself will be a really cute gift, just this little piece right here, this folder. I thought some of you might want to make it, even if you didn't buy the tutorial or if you just bought the tutorial only, I don't think had the measurements for this. So that's why I went ahead and um, called out the measurements to you on this one. Thank you guys for being here. So the next step in this theme is to make the Mickey Mouse Head Shaker. So tomorrow we will do that together. And then after that, we will start on the, um, the other theme, which is the scenic route. Okay, guys, thank you so much and see you here tomorrow. Bye.